Welcome back to Force Education. This is Ed. Today we're going to be talking about Bayan Energy Economics. Another update on this one. If you'd like to watch my previous video on this one, you'll find it in the description below. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow. Subscribe and leave notifications on, and let's jump right into this one. So, Bayan Energy Economics with their product Sapphire. So, Sapphire here is a mapping geno genome product which has proven its efficiency with a lot of different researches. Now, some of the latest news, for instance, here uh, is, for instance, including their all the previous news about their uh, different uses, their as well uh, disabilities checkings or mappings for different mappings for genes to try to identify whether it's actually uh, people or young children do actually have some kind of syndrome or disabilities or rather just in fact it being diagnosed without that kind of mapping for genomes. The list goes on there and you'd like you'd have to go on back to my previous videos to find uh, all the details about every single news that I've covered before. Now in general there are no new events coming up. Next we have is one of the latest news that we have um, um, is their public offering. So their public offering which was released this morning puts the stock at six buck a share for approximately around 200 million dollars uh, worth of shares and it's expected to close on the 22nd now this is not the first offering they had one on the 8th which was a public offering for 88.5 million and another on the 12th for 101 so uh, the big part of this one here is if you were to look at it this was 101.8 at price of 3.05 and this is the exact same offering so i believe this is what actually happened here was they opened it up and they upscaled it so all in all you have 101 101.8 plus 200 you have around 300 million dollars i'm skimming down a couple of million just for fees whatever happens your total assets previously was around 41 million at 200 million from where it was in september you are sitting somewhere around 240 million dollars now, that's not just the cash. The cash alone would be somewhere around $320 million. The total debt? The total debt is only around $16 million. So, it is for sure that all their debt will be done. They have enough money to keep them afloat for uh, a long time. And as well, they're going to be able to uh, expand or increase or develop new products, etc. So, things are looking alright, but the thing that is interesting about this one is there is an offering just two weeks after the previous offering it feels like they are on this dilution machine but why is that well because if you were to go towards the statistics here it's actually pretty smart there i'm not sure if it's actually here uh no it's not but the total debt can easily be paid off if you go to finviz here you're able to see that their put, uh, price over book is 73.18 and that is because their book is their total assets aren't even there but if they increase around 300 million dollars in cash their price over book adjusts in there and it becomes a lot better by magnitudes because their market cap currently is 1.18 billion if they're holding around 300 million in cash that means the price over uh, price over cash you're probably looking from or sorry cash per share is going to improve a lot and their price over the cash for a book value would a lot improve and thus your total book value would increase you get, you get what i'm saying here now it is quite interesting i'm not saying it's a smart move i hate it when companies go on through massive dilution and it really shows you something they think the price point will not stay this high for long nonetheless some of the latest news including for instance md anderson cancer center publication shows how bionic software systems can significantly reduce time to actionable results for uh mild plastics syndrome patients and the list goes on you get a lot of these amazing things about sapphire and i'm a total believer about this product now institutional buyers you'll start seeing some poor in because hey they have an offering it looks like on the 19th we have added or well, on the 19th we have around 69,850 uh on also today or, or sorry yesterday on the 19th church and wealth management decreased their position by 70 percent and you do have a bit of addings here in 2021 in general insiders they've been not touching this one for a bit or nothing even been filed for that so that's something interesting now coming on towards the technical analysis because it would be very interesting to see what the actual market is reacting based on this offering news so all in all it doesn't look that bad we're only 11 percent down we're two bucks above the offering price now 
ADX does show it is bound to have a pullback this week and we're already seeing that pullback to undergo. On the William percent R, we get to see that the stock is still oversold. Oh, sorry, overbought. Momentum's still strong and MAC is still strong. We need to look a little bit onto a one day. On a one day. It looks like today, with that news of the offering, it is seeing a bit of a pullback here in general in the MACD. ADX signals there is a possibility of a pullback, and momentum is dipping a little. Now, the moving averages are incredibly bullish. It's between $6.37 and $4 is where you're more likely going to see positive reversals. Now, even if it's just touching that 10 SMA, it's done it twice, around here and around here, where it's just bounced right off. And this is because this is the trading action zone between the 10 SMA and the 30 EMA. 50 SMA to purple line is above the 200 SMA. So moving averages do look very bullish to this one. Now, in all basically sense of the idea, um, when I'm saying a pullback, I'm not saying a tanking because we've seen one pullback before, a little bit of a jump, then a little bit of pullback, and then a massive jump. Exactly like I called it before. Now, on a two-hour perspective, we get to see a little bit of the, freak, the, the freaking out and everything happening during the day. On the moving averages, it does look bullish but it's very much attempting to go bearish the trading action zone is getting a lot thinner what this says is it might actually slip back towards some dips people freaking out you get to see in the morning alone it went from 8 to 6.99 and then bounced right back which is a good indication that people are buying what you call the dip now moving averages is somewhat still bullish going a little bit bearish probably tomorrow if it doesn't actually open up green and the macd here it looks like it's actually attempting a positive reversals back so that is already amazing news moving average band this one 472 on the top 429 in the bottom in the middle and 386 in the bottom now i'm not saying it's going to reach there i don't expect it to do so but I expect it to still continue rising and rising is a good information here you get to see even with the offering news you don't see a massive dip you don't see that drop massive drop that you're seeing here uh, you're seeing people that are not panicking. It's 125. It's within average volume. You didn't see more of a massive spike where everyone's dumping and freaking out. So it looks like people who are holding are strong believers of this one. Now, Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slow, Stochastic Slow are both showing more of an accumulation period to come with a possible just a slight pullback. Now, we're talking about pullbacks, pullbacks, pullbacks. Well, what are the support levels? Where are the bounce points that we can count on? Current support on the Fibonacci retracements is 787, followed by 624, followed by 509, followed by 394, followed by 252. Significant resistance is 996. Now, doing it on the price line action, you get to see a significant support sits at the 790. Below there, we're looking at 754. Below there, we're looking at 702. Below there, we're looking at 645. Below there, we're looking at 564. Below there, 508. Below there, 438, 398, and then jump diving down to 290. Significant resistances, we're looking at 845, 9 bucks, and 957. Now, coming into the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Before doing so, I want to go three months. I want to go quickly into the price line action and try to show you here what, what is the kind of trend line we're looking at. This here looks to be a really good trend line. In general and it looks like so far it's within there so that is my expectation is that it will probably continue staying somewhere around this region it is in the bottom channel i do expect that it does follow this channel do i see it dropping down below seven moving on forwards not very much that is a very strong support and i think people will continue buying dip and what being is doing is that they're trying to continuously raise money and make make use of this kind of massive move now, if you haven't done so, please make sure to actually subscribe to this channel. It really does help me with every bit of it. Make sure to join our Discord if you'd like to chat. But in general, I am still bullish about this one, but I don't like what they're doing with more dilution. But at the same time, I still have trust that this probably will bounce back. What do you think about this ticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. Wonderful day.